How's it going everybody? Ad Ricker here. I'm out at one of my FPV flying locations that I frequent and I have something new to show you, new to me anyway, Walk Snail Avatar digital FPV system. This is a digital system that can fit into FPV quads, also FPV wings, even very small FPV quads like this. This is the uh, Beta FPV Meteor 75 HD Pro. I've tried it a couple times already out at the field. I've tried it inside of the house. If you're new to FPV or first person view flying with a quadcopter, basically we use these video headsets in order to see what the drone sees as we fly around. That enables us to do some pretty cool tricks, some proximity flying, and some flying that we wouldn't be able to do if we were just flying at line of sight. Coming from analog video transmission, it was pretty rough. It's garbled, it has a lot of breakup and static. And now that a lot of us have graduated to digital video transmissions through DJI or HD Zero or whatever else, we can see that there's differences between systems. Walksnail Avatar definitely has its own particular look and its own particular breakup style. It, it looks a little trippy. I don't fly long range FPV very often. And so what I do normally is fly in close proximity to where I'm standing. And so far, Walksnail Avatar works well in that regard. Now, Walksnail Avatar has a few different versions of the camera and the system. Uh, I'm using the HD Pro kit right now, which has a great camera for low light conditions. It also works out pretty well during the day. Right now with our HD Pro, we're limited to 720 at 120 frames per second. We can also do 1080, but we're limited to 60 frames per second, which isn't always great. At night though, not a big deal. I think I actually don't mind 60 frames per second in low light conditions if it means that I'm getting better low light performance. Regardless, low light performance is increased by the Pro version because of the Sony Starvis 2 sensor as well as the F1.6 camera. The way it looks is reminiscent of the Polar camera that I reviewed last year by Cadex. The benefit here is that we get our 120 frames per second at 720p at night with this low light camera. And that's unheard of at the moment. You don't see any other digital FPV camera with that high frame rate with a low light sensor. Now, when we talk about digital FPV, we think a lot about latency. How much latency are we introducing to the system? This is a variable latency system, and it hovers around 22 milliseconds when you're in that 120 frame per second mode. If you go into a higher quality, like a 1080 at 60, it's essentially like high quality with a DJI FPV system. Latency goes a little bit up. It's not a huge deal, and if you're not racing, I don't think you'll notice it too much, but if you are really in tune with your quad, you may notice some latency uh, in that regard. However, you will definitely start feeling the latency kick up when you push range or you're trying to transmit on the other side of, say, a building or a lot of trees. The video transmission will begin struggling and you may notice the increased latency before you even see the video degrade. Luckily, a red strip will pop up on the edges of your FPV screen to warn you that your transmission health is low. So these are the Avatar goggles and they're basically just different colors of the Fat Shark Dominator HDs. And these are able to tap into the Walksnail HD digital FPV system. They're pretty sharp, they're low form factor, they're very lightweight in comparison to some other goggles I've used. <laughs> but if you have some other analog Fat Sharks or other goggles that can input HDMI, you can use their standalone single avatar VRX modules. Brings down the price a little bit if you're transferring over from analog. We're just talking about the Avatar goggles today. There are 1080p OLED, 5.8 gigahertz transmission, 46 degree field of view, and the camera itself is gonna be 160 degrees field of view. There's also focus adjustments of plus two to minus six, so you don't need corrective lenses if you're able to utilize those numbers. And there's a nice fan right here to keep things defogged on a hot day, or maybe a cold day, depending on how things are fogging up. The goggles are native 4x3 aspect ratio. You can select 16x9, but you're actually cutting off some usable field of view. So let's not do that. We'll keep it 4x3. The good thing about the new Avatar goggles, though, is that we have these directional antenna here, these patch antenna. And the I guess the original version of the Avatar goggles didn't come with a patch antenna. I've also heard that these aren't great antenna for the long run, but they'll get you started. And I think that I should review the default antenna if I'm making a review of the system. When I put the goggles on, they feel okay, but I will admit my big honking nose is pressing up against 
the face pad a little bit. I don't get any light leak. I seem to have a wide enough face that I don't get light leak. But also, the eyepieces are so close to my face that my eyelashes are touching the eyepieces. Now, I have pretty long eyelashes. I have luscious eyelashes, not gonna lie. I do have some more newbie drone goggle foam that I hope is going to help to fit my face a little more and maybe push them out maybe two millimeters away from my face. And that's all my luscious eyelashes would need. You'll notice a few things that I've done to this already. I've installed my own strap. The strap that it came with, I wasn't too big of a fan of. Um, it seemed like it was a little bit flimsy. The Velcro didn't seem like it was that high quality. Now these goggles, the Avatar goggles, they have a USB-C port. And if you have an adapter or a cable with uh, two different ends, you can have a USB-C to HDMI cable. Go to your computer, a monitor, an HDMI capture card, uh, whatever even other goggles with an HDMI input. And you can uh, video out from these without any sort of extra stuff like a smart controller or a DigiView app or stuff like that. Here's the Avatar HD Pro kit out of the box. So we have one antenna. Here's the VTX with the camera. So this is the low light camera. And this is the low light system. That's what differentiates the Avatar Pro from the Avatar V2. So it's the first low light high frame rate 4x3 camera. This is also your uh, USB-C adapter. So this would go from your computer to the USB-C to this port, and that's how you access the footage that was recorded internally. There's no SD card built into this. Uh, what you have to do is offload your footage straight to computer with USB-C. So this thing is a 32 gigabyte internal storage that's gonna record at 1080, 60 FPS, uh, and, and give us that nice uh, internally recorded footage, as opposed to the DVR, which comes with all of the different um, you know, signal degradations that you might have, you might see if you're flying around a building or something like that. So this is the best footage that you're gonna get. And because it's the 32 gigabyte version, we're also able to utilize gyro flow. So gyro flow data is going to be recorded along with our footage because this is the 32 gigabyte version. If you look on the back of the box, it says 32 gigabyte configuration with gyro flow. The big thing about eight versus 32, eight gigabytes gets you about 20 minutes, so I've, so I've read, of recording time at 1080 on this device. If you had the 32 gigabyte uh, version, it's gonna be about 80 minutes. 29 grams for the camera and the VTX. Let's put on the antenna. We're up to 31 grams. Very lightweight system, all things contained and I put it into my Armiton Marmot. Uh, I think it looks really sharp right now, but there was a process to get it going. On the bench, I had to basically put some double-sided tape underneath the module and then double zip tie it to keep it uh, nice and snug. The camera fit very nicely though, had no issues there. This is the Beta FPV Meteor 75 Pro HD. And this has the Avatar Mini 1S light unit. So this gets powered off of one 550 milliamp hour 1S battery, which is pretty insane. We get HD quality recording and display and you know transmission off of a one cell battery, which we could not do with something like DJI FPV. You can get your HD quality and fly around the house. That's amazing, I love that. Now the huge benefit about this system is that you get full Betaflight OSD, iNav OSD, KISS OSD. So it's almost like analog FPV back in the day where you can use your full Betaflight OSD. However, it doesn't record that OSD to your footage. It only displays on the goggles as an overlay. All right, so here I am flying. And one thing that I'm noticing is that 50 megabit produces a lot of issues with stuttering and a lot of issues with um, like video hiccups and even some dropouts like if I were to land far away and then try and arm again it's almost like I lose signal for about three seconds it's very odd so right now I'm not a fan of 50 megabit which is kind of funny because you think uh, the higher the megabit the better but no the present moment in time 50 megabit seems to be glitching out more than 25 or whatever this is yep little little lag there so I can feel the variable latency when I get far away. And it seems to be pretty intense when you get that far away. 
unbroken line of sight, it seems to be okay. You know, I, I seem to be able to pop up in the sky pretty well. But penetration through vegetation, which is starting to become a real issue now that we're into late April into May. We're gonna have to uh, keep an eye on that. So it seems like it's good for closer proximity, maybe even medium proximity. But if you're trying to do intricate stuff far away, I'd say forget it. Now, after updating the firmware recently, I also noticed a few other things pop into view. One thing is called ranging mode. Ranging mode is the ability for these goggles, this transmission system, to estimate how far away your drone is from your goggles. And it's pretty accurate. And we were, as a, as, you know, as a group the other day, we were all at the park wondering, how does it do that? Well, I asked Caddx that. They said basically, because the transmission is light speed, essentially, it's able to estimate how fast the transmission comes back from the goggles and to the goggles to the quad. And somehow it's able to estimate it. So if it's two meters away, it says two meters away. If it's 40 meters away, well, it's about 40 meters away. This function doesn't work on 50 megabit mode. So if you turn on 50 megabit mode, your channel selection goes down from seven to three and you lose a few other things but that might come back with firmware updates. The good thing about this, Walksnail and Caddx, they seem to be updating firmware pretty frequently. The last one was in late March, and so hopefully we'll be getting more features, and uh, I'm looks, looking forward to seeing what's about to come with this, with more uh, updates in the future. Now, even though there is internal recording in here, which is nice, you'd think that would be nice, there's no micro SD card to pop out, and there's no uh, built-in USB, you know, port. There's a proprietary cable that goes from that specific cable style to USB. So you have to keep that special cable adapter with you wherever you go if you want to offload footage. Now, if you're talking eight gigabytes, like maybe this little guy has, eight gigabytes holds about 20 minutes of footage. So that means you're gonna get four or five flights and then this thing's gonna be full. It's no longer gonna be able to record internally. You do have DVR recording in your goggles, but that's gonna be limited to the video signal strength and quality that you're experiencing. So DVR out of the goggles, the video recording out of the goggles, if I fly way over there and my signal starts to break up, you're gonna see that break up in the goggles. You wouldn't see that in the internal recording of the quad, but if the quad is full, and you don't have that cable, or you don't have your laptop to offload, well, you're not gonna record your HD, you know, high quality footage uh, into the drone anymore, unless you wanna format it and start from scratch. Uh, image quality looks good. Definitely waiting for the low light to test out that again. When I go in the trench run, it's behavior. Whoa, hello. Full Minecraft, red bars of death, two megabits. Trippy vision. Oh, 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 seven. I'm trying to get out of the, tri the trippy vision. I don't think I like. I think I'd rather have like autofocus mode. The trippy vision is borderline unflyable. I'm just saying, out here just flying around like this, it's fine. And it looks reasonably well. It's not bad. It's not perfect. It's not bad. We'll see how it does in the low light. Uh, I dig it. I, especially uh, if I was coming from analog and had like HDOs, fat sharks, you know. I would do this if the receiver for it doesn't give you a lot of latency. But this is great, I love the image. The image is great, flying at night. Parking lot, it looks very detailed. I'm just shocked at how good it looks. So I, I'm actually impressed, I actually really like it. When it's detailed, man, it's like crisp, very detailed. I don't think it quite has the performance that DJI FPV has. Um, it's still really good. And so if you're coming from analog, I think the question whether you go digital uh, DJI or whether you go walk snail is a big question, especially if you have your old analog goggles and you want to spend as little as possible to get into the DJI game. The VRX by walk snail is going to be a great option for you, I think. But if you already have DJI FPV, I don't think you'll be coming to walk snail I don't think you're gonna be converting over to it unless you're someone like me and you get sent these uh, by Caddx 
uh, in exchange for a review, which by the way, I'm trying to be honest with, despite being given this for free. So it's not just a gradual degradation of the quality that you might see in some of the textures of the grass and the leaves of trees and stuff. Every once in a while, there is a legitimate hiccup of the video, and that can be jarring for some people, especially if it's uh, at a really bad time, like you're about to dive into something. I'd love to fly from here and have a bunch of freestyle opportunities up by the building, but by the time I get there, I'm going through some trees and just that little bit, and the concrete on the other side of the parking lot is just enough for me to start having real issues flying up there next to the building's base. You think about how you want to use it. Do you like the small form factor of these goggles, which I forget I even have them on sometimes? Do you like the fact that this is not DJI and so they're not so heavy handed with their remote ID compliance coming up maybe? Do you like the ability to have a USB-C video out to HDMI? It's very simple and easy, it should be. I was disappointed with 50 megabit. I don't know what was going on with that. I didn't like what I saw. I went to 25 megabit and things were much more smooth. Also the proprietary storage, which is kind of weird. You don't have something ejectable, you don't have a built-in USB-C, you have an adapter, adapter cable of all things. And I've lost that thing already and I barely had this system half a week. It's also a different cable. So the Avatar Mini 1S Lite unit takes a different cable, even a different connector than the uh, HD Pro kit or the V2 kit. Avatar is still a work in progress and there are a few things in the menus that you can't even use. So like there's one thing called share, which I think is spectator mode essentially, and you can't use it. It's just not even you know available yet. So thank you so much for watching my review of the uh, Walksnail Avatar system. Keep an eye out for the Beta FPV Meteor 75 HD Pro video. I will be reviewing this soon. You already saw some footage from it in this video, but a review of this quad's coming soon. Thank you to Caddx for sending me Walksnail. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, happy flying.